Hey, this is a second video for Friday, February 18th. It's PS35B Blake, and we're talking about momentum. Here I have a Newton's cradle, which demonstrates two things, conservation of kinetic energy, which isn't part of this chapter, and conservation of momentum. So if I lift one of these and release it, one goes out. If I lift two of these, I have twice the momentum if I lift it to the same height and two of them go out. So we can talk about that more in class. What happens like with a pool ball is momentum is mass times velocity. So if you take that pool ball and, it, and you give it a certain fast velocity and it hits these other pool balls, if, those, if there's no friction causing an energy loss, then those collisions would be perfectly elastic. In all the momentum of all the balls going every which direction, all those momenta added together would be the same as the single ball's momentum going in. There would be no loss of momentum. Now, I said something about loss of energy and friction. In the case of momentum, the momentum is conserved even if there is friction. Uh, the Newton's cradle works because both momentum and kinetic energy are conserved and this works because both kinetic energy and momentum are conserved but the momentum would be conserved even in collisions that that were like crumpled up or in elastic collisions like car collisions so it says that there is no change in momentum the momentum you had before it's all there after the collision it's all still there there's no loss of it okay now that's what makes the cannon or a gun recoil and go back the other way. Not as fast, not as fast, but if you've ever shot a gun, you know it has recoil. Uh, before this is gun shot, actually, let's say the cannon is sitting there. And let's say that cannon is 100 times more massive than the cannonball. When everything's sitting there before it goes boom, there's zero momentum. And after the boom, that has a positive momentum, and this has a negative momentum, and they're equal, and they're opposite. But because this is low mass, it's going fast. Because this is high mass, it's going slow. But when you take mass times velocity equals mass times velocity, they're equal and opposite. So if the cannonball, if the cannon is 100 times the mass, this will go 100 times faster. That's an easy way to do these problems. So if the ball's mass is four kilograms, it's about, I don't know, nine pounds or so, and the can's, cannon's mass is 400 kilograms, which is like 900 pounds, and this cannon goes backwards at three meters per second, what is the ball speed? Now an easy way to do this, if you want the easy way, if this is 100 times more massive, and that's 100 times faster, if this is three meters per second, 100 times faster than three is, let's show you the official way to do it. This mass times this velocity, and this mass times this velocity have to be zero, just like they were before, because one's positive, one's negative. Add them together, they should come out to zero. So I can subtract one off the other side, and this shows that they're equal and opposite, which is exactly what we expect. Uh, I don't have that worked out, so let's do it right here. I would have, let's see, the cannon was 400 kilograms, and the velocity of the cannon was... Uh, three meters per second, and that has to equal the cannonball, four kilograms times V. Well, by now, you know how to do this. We've done this over and over. Get this by itself, divide this side by four kilograms, but to be equal, we have to divide this side by four kilograms. We're gonna cancel the kilograms and the four, so 100 times three, 300, 300 meters per second. Yes, there will be a question like that sort of on the test. 300 meters per second. Which is 
going to be late next week at the earliest. Okay, now let's look at something here. This is crazy. If you've been swimming and you've jumped off of a, a inner tube to dive off of it, what happened? Well, you probably noticed that you kind of plop down in the water and you don't really go forward a significant amount, but the inner tube goes shooting out. Why is that? Now, hang on a second. Let's say you jump off of a canoe or a rowboat. What happens then? Well, you go forward more this time, and the boat goes shooting back. So you both move. If you're about the same mass, you're going to move about the same speed and go about the same distance. Well, except the boat's going to continue once you're in the water because it's floating. But what if you went off a houseboat? If you've been swimming off a houseboat on vacation somewhere. Well, it still goes back a tiny amount because it's real massive. And you're going to go forward farther and faster because you're not shooting the object away. Now, what happens if you get a really, 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 really massive object like the Earth? The Earth has a mass of about six followed by 24 zeros, kilograms. Six, zero, 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 that's a whole bunch of kilograms. The Earth is huge. That mass is huge. When you jump off the Earth, does it go the other way? Unbelievably, yes. But if you're 100 kilograms, which is about 221 pounds, and you jump at six meters per second up, so this would be like a really uh, in-shape lineman or something for a college or protein, that's a, that's a big jump, that's a fast jump. You would have a momentum, the Earth has to have an equal and opposite momentum, unbelievably. But because the Earth's mass is so enormous, this velocity is immeasurably tiny. It is point zero 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 a whole bunch of zero 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 a whole bunch of zero 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 one meters per second. So the bigger the boat you're jumping off of, the slower it moves. Even if it was the Earth, it would move exceedingly slowly and there's all kinds of other motions on the earth at the same time and it would cancel out. You'd never notice it. It's immeasurable, but nevertheless real. Okay, so let's say you have a rocket. Does a rocket work in space? Yes. That's why we use rockets in space. They don't push off the air. The rocket gases are pushing off the inside of the motor and shooting that way at a really, 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 really high speed. And they're gases, so they're really, really low mass. But that'll give enough of a push to make a more rock, much more massive rocket move forward with a very small gain in velocity compared to the speed of these. Because these are going out maybe tens of thousands of miles an hour. You get hit with air going tens of thousands of miles an hour. Okay, if we decided to stick you in front of this rocket, you'd get roasted and blown apart. Because that amount of, you know, I know the air is light and the gases are light, but when they're going tens of thousands of miles an hour, that's a strong push. Enough to push the rocket opposite way in space. So the forces are equal and opposite. That's Newton's first law. And the momentum, or momenta, that's plural of momentum, are equal and opposite. So why do the gases travel so much faster? Because they're so much lighter, less mass compared to the heavy rocket. So rockets work in space because of momentum. You know, if we've got the rocket gases shooting out here real fast, it'll push the rocket that way. And our equation still works. Momentum is equal to momentum. Mass times velocity is equal to mass times velocity. Let's say the rocket is a thousand times heavier than these gases, then these gases are gonna shoot out of the rocket a thousand times faster than the rocket picks up speed. It takes a rocket a while to pick up speed. Okay, let's go on to the questions. Paige, you should have your book. Uh oh, what happened? I don't know where my book, somehow my book got turned. Uh, we're in chapter three, page 92, number 22. It says, 
use Newton's laws, three of them, to describe how inertia, gravity, and air resistance affects skydivers as they fall, open their parachutes, and reach terminal velocities. Now, if you're a skydiver falling, you're going to be going really quick, terminal velocity, downward force of gravity, your weight equals the air resistance. So you're going to be at terminal velocity, not picking up any more speed. We'll pull that parachute and very quickly slow way down because the resistance is going to get high. So at the start of the fall, when you first jump out of the, when Felix Baumgartner first jumps out of the high altitude balloon, gravity is the only force acting on you. So he picks up speed and accelerates downward. But very quickly, air resistance increases. Within a few seconds, you're going very, very fast, and your air resistance increases to the point where the net force will get less. Your acceleration will get less. So you're getting faster, but you're not getting faster as quickly. And within a few seconds, you will hit terminal velocity. So Felix Baumgartner was 100,000 feet up, and because the air was so thin, it probably took him about 15 seconds or so to get to terminal velocity. If you jumped out, if he was, if you jumped out of a hot air balloon at you know, 5,000 feet up, you'd hit terminal velocity in a few seconds because the air is thicker. When the parachute opens, the air resistance gets huge, and your speed will decrease very quickly. And within a second or two, you'll have slowed from 100 miles an hour down to 10. At some point, with your parachute out, the air resistance force will balance gravity and you'll fall much more slowly at a slow terminal velocity and come down at maybe, you know, meters per second, five, six meters per second, which is still pretty hard to hit the ground. You gotta be in pretty good shape uh, parachuting. You, you know, you, it's, it's a stressful thing on your body. So you wanna be young and in, in decent health. Number 23 says, discuss the advantages of wearing a safety belt when riding in a vehicle. Well, rather than decelerating when you hit the objects in front of you in the dashboard and the windshield and the steering wheel, you will be slowed down with the car, which is a heavy acceleration, but it's not as bad. So without safety belts, your inertia keeps you moving at a constant velocity into the windshield and dashboard and steering column, steering wheel. Safety belts decrease your acceleration. They slow you down as the car crumples. So you, you do that deceleration over a few feet, which is much better than a couple of inches. And that really decreases the force on you and it will really reduce your injury. Number 24, why do planets orbit the sun instead of traveling off into space? We're gonna use Sir Isaac Newton's explanation here and say that large objects like the sun produce gravity. Planets orbit the sun because the acceleration of gravity of the sun changes the direction of their motion. It gives them a centripetal acceleration towards the center, much like, not much like, a little bit like, I've got this button on a string here for another class, whirling it around like this. So it's pulling that earth in a circle. This prevents them from a traveling in a straight line off into space. It keeps pulling the earth in a circle around the sun, the gravity does. Number 24. That was 24. Number 25. Describes what happens to the two momentum of two billiard balls that collide. The momentum before and the momentum after is the same. One billiard ball will speed up and the other one will slow down. One will pick up momentum, one will lose momentum, but the total momentum is the same before and after. So if there are no outside forces, the total momentum of the two colliding billiard balls is the same before and after. Momentum is conserved. Number 26, 
How can a rocket move through outer space where there's no matter for it to push on? Because what's being pushed on is, here's the push. The rocket gases are pushing on the rocket motor and they push each other away. That's where the push is. Rockets move because the force of the gas on the rocket pushes the rocket forward and the force of the rocket on the gas pushes the gas backward. So the gas pushes the rocket forward, the rocket pushes the gases backwards. 27, suppose you're standing on a scale in an elevator that is accelerating upward. So it's taking off and pushing you upward or coming down and then stopping and pushing you upward. Will your scale read your weight as larger as or smaller? It'll read it as larger because it's pushing on you more than the gravity is. You accelerate this way. That doesn't mean your speed is that way. It means you accelerate it that way. You're pushed this way. So the net force is upward. The force that the scale exerts is greater than your weight, so the reading would increase. You'd have a bigger scale reading. Number 28, a fuel-filled rocket is at rest. It burns its fuel and expels hot gas. The gas has a momentum of 1,500 kilograms times meters per second forward. What is the momentum of the rocket? It's not a math problem. If the, if the gas is a momentum this way, the rocket has an equal and opposite momentum this way. They're gonna be equal and opposite momentum. So the momentum of the rocket is 1,500 kilograms times meters per second forward. See you Monday or Tuesday, and we'll start the uh, CARTS investigation. Number four.